Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. And you'll no doubt have seen a couple of days ago, I released a short for my road reel entry called Hammer Time, which of course contained the Thor Hammer catch effect from Avengers Endgame. And of course, that's what we're doing today, guys. So in order to complete this effect, you need to shoot yourself pretending to catch the hammer. And it is very important that when you pretend to catch the hammer, you recoil back and turn your back to camera, making sure that your arm is out of the shot. That way it's actually possible to switch between a digital Thor hammer and a practical Thor hammer. And speaking of practical Thor hammers, I highly recommend you pick one up. I actually picked this one up over here on eBay, so it's really not that expensive to grab a scale model of Thor's hammer. You also need to head to filmlearning.com slash downloads and grab a Thor hammer effects pack, which contains both the 3D Thor hammer and some rendered out files for those of you without Cinema 4D. Now guys, one thing I will recommend if you're going to render out your own 3D Thor hammer animation is, if you can, try and grab a HDRI image of wherever you're shooting. Now I actually used my Google Pixel 3 to take one of this studio, but if you don't have that phone, I'm sure there's some free apps online. In fact, I'm gonna link some down in the description so you can get that HDRI image, as this really helps to light your model in the scene. Now, of course, you'll also need a shot of whatever the hammer is slamming into, as well as just a blank background shot that you can insert the return animation into. Now, guys, just a side note, you will need the full version of Cinema 4D to animate the hammer. I've tried getting it to work with Cineware and After Effects and Cinema 4D Lite, but for some reason, I'm getting a texturing error and the model isn't showing up in After Effects as intended. Now, I'm sure I'll be able to fix this in an update and I will update that as soon as possible, but for the meantime, you'll need the full version of Cinema to animate this, or you can use the pre-rendered animations that I've got in the download pack. Once you've got all that, let's get to work, shall we? Okay, guys, so we're starting off in After Effects with our project file already open. Now, you can see over here, I have three different Cinema 4D files that I've imported in. One called Throw, one called Return, and one called Catch. We're going to touch on each of them, but the hammer catch is going to be the one we spend the most time on, as it's the most complicated. So firstly, let's open up my catch comp. At the moment, you can see I only have the footage in there. Now, in order to animate our hammer flying into our hand, we're going to need this footage as a reference in Cinema 4D. Now, in order to make this part as easy as possible, the footage that you drop in this comp has to match the timing and the framing of my shot right here. So the easiest way to do that is to drop your footage in, turn down the opacity on it, and sync up the timing and position so they match as best they can. Turn the opacity back up to replace my footage, and we'll move on to the next step. So let's head up to Composition and add it to the render queue. From there, let's click on Lossless, and from the drop-down menu, we want to select Photoshop Sequence or PNG Sequence. Either one of these is fine, as we get an image sequence. Let's then render that out and move on to the next step, animating the hammer in Cinema 4D. We'll now head over to the project window, select our Catch Cinema 4D file, head to Edit and click Edit Original to open up Cinema 4D. Okay, we're in Cinema 4D now. And you can see I already have some animation in here. In fact, I already have this shot fully animated to suit my shot because I've already done it before. But I'm gonna show you how we add that animation in real time. Firstly, I do want to say, you don't have to redo the whole thing. Just the frames where your actor is physically catching the hammer is really all we need to do. These frames right here. But let's get going. I'm going to head down to our materials manager here and double click on the material called BG. This is where we'll be adding our newly rendered image sequence to. Let's click on color, click this little arrow and select load image. We'll then click on the first image in our sequence right here. Let's then click through and load the rest of the images in the animation setup. Just hit calculate right here, and you can see it's loaded all the frames and it's determined our frame rate. If we close that out now, you can see our catch video is now playing in the background, and since I pre-animated the hammer, you can see that the catch works pretty well and it's synced up with my footage. So let's step through the process of doing this, as it's not too hard to pull off. First, I'm going to scrub backwards until the point just before the catch right here. And from there, I'm going to select each keyframe and delete them one by one. Or you can just do it all in one go, but sometimes cinema can get a little bit screwy and delete your model entirely when you do this. Not sure why, but just to be safe, I'll do it this way. Done. Okay, now it's time to animate. So let's head back to the point where our last keyframe was, right here. Then we're going to move forward. We're going to position the hammer exactly where we want it. Thank you. 
Once you're happy with that frame, let's hit the record keyframe button, done, and then we'll move on to the next frame. Now gang, this is the part that I really encourage you to take your time on. It should only be about six or eight frames or so to encapsulate the entire catch, but you want it to feel as natural as possible. So really think about the movement of the hammer in 3D space and how it would move if it were physically in the scene. The best part of catching it and recoiling back like this so your back's to the camera is that you don't have to animate the actor you know, actually holding the CG hammer too. I mean, you can if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it as it tends to look pretty fake as it's actually pretty hard to pretend to be holding something and 100% match the movement of your hand and just essentially look like you're holding a CG prop. Okay, I think I'm all done with my animation now and this is the end result. Not bad. Trust me when I say that this will look a lot better once we bring it into After Effects. Now the last step here is adding your HDRI image to the scene, if you have one. If I turn the sphere on here and our image sequence off, you can see a pretty close approximation of my studio in 3D space. This, as well as some 3D lights, is actually helping both lighting and reflections on the hammer. Another thing that helps blend the hammer into your scene. So to replace this HDRI with your own is simple. Just head down to the material marked HDRI and replace that by clicking the material, selecting luminance and replacing the image right here. Now you might need to rotate your sphere to match your shot where your camera placement is, but that's easy enough to do with the rotation controls. But that's how you add a HDRI image to your 3D shot. Now that we're done with the animation, all we're going to do is just head up to the render settings, click on save, and we'll designate a save area as well as name these. You can name them whatever you want. We'll then also make sure the alpha channel is turned on, close that out, hit the render button, and then we'll jump back to After Effects with that footage imported. Sweet, it's in. Let's now drag and drop this into our catch comp and check out our preview. Well, that, uh, <laughs> that looks terrible. Let's get started, shall we? My first step is to trim the end of my hammer footage once the hammer goes behind my back. From there, let's scrub along the timeline to the point where my actor catches the hammer. At this point, we want to hit Control shift d and split the clip. We'll then head up and grab the pen tool. Let's then draw a mask around the point of the hand here that makes contact with the hammer. Done. We'll then head down to our mask settings and set this mask to subtract. We'll also click the stopwatch on mask path. We'll now go frame by frame, adjusting this mask to sit the hammer in our hand on each frame until we get to the point of it being behind our back. Like so. We can just expand that mask out there and just, just put it in front of our body on that last frame. Nice. Next step, motion blur. Now for this guys, I'm gonna use a paid plugin called Real Smart Motion Blur from Revision Effects, as I find it way superior to the native pixel motion blur in After Effects. But if you don't have this, by all means use pixel motion blur. It's then just a matter of tweaking the blur amount until you're happy with it. If we check out a preview now, that looks pretty natural to me. Now my next step here is to color correct the hammer to suit the shot. Now whether you do this before the other steps or not, totally up to you gang. With the motion blur and masking, that's already a lot of work to blend this hammer into the scene. And all I've done is add an instance here of Color Easter 4 from Red Giant and made some subtle corrections. If I turn it on and off, you can really see it's not dramatic, but it does help to better blend the hammer into the shot. As I've said before guys, it's really not worth me showing you my exact settings for this, as I always just eyeball coloring and your shot will always be different, but essentially just work at the coloring until the hammer looks right to you. Okay, next step. Now this one is a subtle blending effect, but it really just helps. And that's adding a contact shadow to your actor when the hammer is moving across your actor's body. So in order to do this, let's duplicate the second hammer layer, this one right here. We'll then delete all the effects from the bottom one, including the masks, done. Let's then head to effect, 
Perspective and grab Drop Shadow. We'll then click Shadow Only, and from there we want to play with the distance, the softness and opacity to approximate a shadow on your actor. Just look around your shot to see how the light might behave to inform where and what your shadow looks like. That looks pretty good to me. We also only want that shadow on screen for the frames where that hammer is in front of your actor, so it's casting a shadow onto their body. So the moment that hammer goes behind the actor's body, we're going to trim the end of the clip like so. Let's now check out a preview. Nice. That looks pretty awesome now. One other thing you could do if you like gang is add a little camera shake to your shot when the catch occurs, just to give it a bit more impact. But that's totally up to you. But that shot is done now. Let's move on to the other shots. Firstly, the throw. So you can see in this shot, the hammer comes on screen and smashes Doug right in the head. Now you can see in this frame right here that the hammer is behind Doug's head for like two frames. All I did here was use the Roto and Refine Edge tool to separate those two frames of Doug's head from the background. Super easy, guys. I then added a spark burst from Action VFX to make the impact seem a little more impactful, and then I added a subtle bit of camera shake to further add weight to the impact itself. It's a quick shot, and it's not really that complicated at all, but little things like having the hammer just appear slightly behind the head for one or two frames really helps to sell the hammer in that shot. Now, the last shot here is the return when I call the hammer back. Now, once again, this is an easy shot with pretty much the exact same steps as our catch. We've got motion blur and a color grade on the hammer, as well as a shadow cast right here on the wall. The only difference is with this shot here, I had a reflective picture in the shot, this poster right here, the unbreakable one. Now you can see in my final shot, the hammer reflects in the glass. This is a pretty easy thing to do as well, gang. All I did was go into my Cinema 4D file, the one marked return, add a plane to the scene, approximately where the picture frame was, and then I added a reflective black material to the plane, and bam, you have a hammer reflecting in real time. I then rendered that out separately and added that to the comp below our hammer animation. I just also want to say, if you have the full version of Cinema, you could totally render this out in Cinema 4D with uh, multi-pass and in the physical renderer and adjust everything like that and get a much more photoreal result. But my goal here was to make an effect that everyone can use. And sometimes you have to dial yourself back in order to achieve that. Now it goes without saying, I also want to thank The Blast for providing the Thor Hammer sound effects, as well as Crimson Rens for retexturing this Thor Hammer model for me. I think the world of these two, I really do, and I've linked cards to both of their channels above for you guys to check out, and I encourage you to do so because they have amazing content. But for now, that is another effect. Done. Out of all the steps, you can get something like this. So guys, that's my take on the Thor Hammer Return effect from Avengers Endgame and every other Thor movie. As you can see, it's only a few frames of keyframe animation to achieve a really cool effect. And having that HDRI image to light the model and also having a practical hammer on set really just helps to sell the effect even more. Now guys, this is a bit of a bittersweet episode because this is the last episode of season seven of Filmland. I'm gonna be taking a couple of weeks off to go on vacation with my family, as well as work on some more complicated stuff like Iron Man suit ups and Star Lord helmet effects. So keep an eye out for that when I return. But as always guys, if you did enjoy this episode, please smash that like button. I really do appreciate it and it does help out. And hey, if you do have a request, make sure you leave it in the comment section down below. And hey, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button below and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single film learning episode. I've got two other episodes right over here. I've got all my social media crap with the Facebook and the Instagram and the Twitter and the whatnot, as well as our Patreon if you want to help support the channel. Or if you want to support the channel directly on YouTube, you can click that join button below. But until I see you again for season eight, guys, keep learning.